Uh, today is Get Smarter Saturday, as you know. Now, here's the thing, chat. Most of you, let's be honest, are three heads. On a good day, a lot of you are two heads. I've seen some one heads, okay? We are going to use the power of Get Smarter Saturday to... No, wait, no. I'm not shooting your... No, I'm not... Sorry. I'm like injecting more brain power into your head. Forehead, five head, six head. You're going to... Your head's gonna expand. It's like it's like I'm like it's like a it's like a pump. Are you an executive? This is perfect. I am an executive. All right. This is how to compose corporate music with no soul. <laughs> Wait, I'm interested in this. <laughs> if it tries to come across as emotionally charged or poignant, it ends up sickly sweet and desperate. <laughs> and I don't think I'm alone here. Most people I know seem to feel the same way, which makes. Can I just say? From a marketer's POV, can I just jump in with a marketer's POV for a second? This guy's not wrong. It's harder than you think, okay? Put yourself, let's just say, you are now the marketer in charge of the BP oil account, okay? And, and BP oil is just getting over a massive spill and everyone hates them. Make them look good. What are you gonna do? You're gonna put on some fancy music, you're gonna make some kids smile, and you're gonna try, you don't have a lot of options. You're not, there's not like a way to do it. Also, let's say you come up with a great idea. Let's say you're like, you know what? People are sick of the bullshit, okay? People are done with that. You know what they want? They want the real. Let's come out there and say, hey, yeah, we're BP. We don't give a shit about the environment. We care about making stacks, invest. <laughs> it's bold, it's brash, but maybe it'll cut through the BS. Maybe people will respect it at least. You pitch that at the meeting, their CEO goes, no. <laughs> No, make it happier. Also make the logo bigger. <laughs> oh, okay. Corporations are people, my friend. Oh, oh yeah, I, I forgot about that. Um, yeah, yeah, thanks. Did he say that? <sighs> These poor corporations just get bullied, dude. They're treated sub. They're treated like subhuman. I'll say it. I see people going silence brand on, on Twitter. They treat corporations like they have nothing important to say, like they're subhuman. And finally, we have Mitt Romney standing up. My new Sony phone is ringing. Corporate music is different. <laughs> Avril. Not Avril Lavigne. No! If she can be corrupted, who's safe? <sighs> Makes me want to take my brand new Samsung Galaxy S11 phone and send a strongly worded email using its awesome Bixby voice assistant meter. Bixby. Please compose an email to Avril Lavigne's fan page. You're a sellout. Not Avril Lavigne. Now only Matthew McConaughey is left pure from selling out. <laughs> yeah. Because you know what? Matthew McConaughey just loves Lincoln cars. <laughs> I've been driving a Lincoln since long before anybody paid me to drive one. And that's facts. That's all you need to be said. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's, he just likes Lincoln. I didn't do it to be cool. Didn't do it to make a statement. I just liked it. Yeah, that's a f ad, dude. <laughs> I didn't do it because anyone paid me. I mean, they did, of course, pay me millions for this ad and the entire campaign of ads that I've been doing. And actually, of course, I wouldn't be doing this <laughs> without being paid. Also, to be clear, <laughs> I didn't drive a link, and I lied about that earlier. <laughs> There's a lot of photo evidence showing I had different cars before they paid me to drive a Lincoln, but that's that's neither here nor there. My Matthew McConaughey is also a very good Tom Hanks uh, for his gump. <laughs> it's not about hugging trees. You just gotta find that balance. Or taking care of yourself it takes care of more than just yourself. That's not a bad one. That's not a bad one. That's actually not a bad one. Let me say why. People only respond to ads that talk about um, societal or environmental or broader benefits if they think there's something in it for them. Honestly, I couldn't give two shits about the environment, <laughs> but I get good gas mileage. <laughs> and you can tell your friends you're helping out. <laughs> we have been marketing COVID all wrong. We've been saying shit like, if you wear a mask, you protect grandma. And it hasn't worked at all because most people just won't respond to that. Nurses and frontline uh, medical workers in the South especially <laughs> are starting to use the, the phrase, 
you can get erectile dysfunction with COVID <laughs> to get them to wear a mask. It's the first effective thing. Even if you thought they'd get sick, like, well, I'll get over it. Yeah, you might get sick, but you might have permanent ED. And finally, we should have been doing that from minute one, dude. It should have been the main campaign from minute one. COVID ruins your dick. Does it cancel out current ED? What are you asking me? Are you asking me that you have ED currently and you want to catch COVID to try and cancel it out? So to pass the time, I grabbed a book I was reading called Dialectics of Enlightenment by Theodore Adorno wow, and Max you're smart. Horkheimer, written in 19... 19- uh, I read Harry Potter, so one for one. What's your next book? Das Capital? I've read Harry Potter too. Chamber of Secrets. Keep it going. I can go all day. You read Post Corona? Hmm, great. Harry Potter 3, baby. Harry Potter 3. Azkaban. That was a good one. Think and Grow Rich? Oh, so I, I guess I can't beat that. Oh, wait, yes, I can. Harry Potter 4. Goblet of Fire. That's a thick one. That counts as at least four of your books. And keep them coming. Uh, I can go I can go to the uh, Fantastic Beasts. I read it all. I have a gigantic brain. My overwhelming feeling at that moment was, oh man, I really wish I could just exit this dump and go home. And then I looked up at the billboards and focused on one that was advertising a fashion line promising to help you. And it changed his whole life. And he realized how happy and fun things could be if you just purchased products. And that's the end of the story. Marketing is good for you. And the end of the day, he was depressed and he saw a great ad and it made him happy. And that's what marketing does. It makes people happy. It's that I have to act in a way where my personality is locked in a little cupboard and replaced with the personality of the company. Okay, this actually speaks to me. Can I say, this is why I stream. No cap on a stack. And that line just literally broke through my brain. I feel like I did get smarter just watching that. This is the words I've been trying to say. I really like my job. I like what I do. But when I'm at my job, I am a... I am not full Atrioc, right? <laughs> I am a certain version of Atrioc <laughs> that exists within the confines of what that job entails. What I think I have now is almost a really good version of both worlds because here's the other deal. I can't be that version that I am at NVIDIA with you guys. This is not like total freedom. I can do a little bit of on Marketing Mondays, but let's be honest. If I tried to get dead serious and talk about some hardcore, you know, get really into the data People would get bored. <laughs> and so I like that I have the split. I can do the I can do one in video, I can do one on stream. And as long as I can keep this going, I'm pretty happy. But to do that, you have to sub to my YouTube so I can get the golden the silver play button. 100 k I want it so bad. Even those among us who are privileged enough to work in well-paid jobs. And Why is everyone saying among us over and over? What what am I, what am I missing? Oh, he said among us, and you guys said among us poggies. <laughs> okay. Get Smarter Saturdays is a lot of work to do. We're, we're starting from a really bad baseline. First we have D. Then we have G. Sunday! Followed bloody by C, Sunday! Followed by a cowardly retreat back to D. I mean, okay. Maybe I'm just not a music major like this guy, but I didn't find that retreat to D that cowardly. <laughs> I wasn't listening to it thinking, what was that? You just brought shame to your whole family with that retreat. That D chord was bitch made. <laughs> I guess I just don't, I haven't, I'm not versed enough, pun intended, in music to notice these things. I obviously know that corporate music is soulless. I can feel it on the broad level, if not the micro level. But it's just so funny to think of a guy like listening to a song and thinking, whoa, did you guys hear that chord change? That was fucking bitch made. Holy shit. You guys hear that? Oh my God. What a puss. First, you have the ostinato. Oh shit. You put this in a video game, MFers be going hard saying it's the greatest. You put this fucking exact thing in a fucking Mega Man. You have people in 10 years saying the greatest soundtrack of all time. <laughs> the purpose of this kind of music is to help sell the idea that the product being sold is the culmination of some kind of profound altruistic <laughs> endeavor. Dude, this the- is a fucking tech world um, sin. Tech ads try to make like introducing the new Facebook poke feature, the culmination of thousands of years of human evolution. 
by working together, we can help keep our distances apart. Facebook poke available now. Now, well, since I don't have one of these to hand, I asked fellow YouTuber David Bruce to record himself strumming the lamest progression he could think of on his one. David Bruce has 110k subscribers. Subscribe to my YouTube! <laughs> I want to get to 100k! I want to be there with David Bruce! If I meet David Bruce at the club, he's going to flex on me! Dude, my percentage of unsubscribed is super high. I got I I got to say that in my intro like I'm Tommy in it. Here at Shell, we are sad. <laughs> and that's what corporate music is. <laughs> Pretending. Damn, you know, Pretending. I think we've given Shell a lot of shit, but something something lately made me think about it. It's like they're pretty good guys. Like, let's ease off their back with these regulations, boys. Can we just stop regulating companies like Shell, people like Shell really? Cuz companies are people. Can we stop regulating them so much? I think they need a little more breathing rooms, you know? They're going through some hard times right now. They clearly are sad. It is a pretty accurate portrayal of what corporate life is really like. Dull, hackneyed, and completely lacking in substance. This guy really hated his job. I don't <laughs> I don't agree with all the things you're saying. One thing I do say is I think one thing you didn't touch on is that so much of this stuff is designed by committee, and that is why, why it ends up feeling soulless. You might come back with a version one that's pretty interesting, and then there's a room full of people, all of whom have to feel like they're contributing. The the hidden secret is that you can't just sit there at that boardroom if you're an executive or whatever and be silent. It feels like you're not contributing. So you have to say, how about we tone, tone that first part down? And so after the end of all that feedback, which can't be ignored because these people all rank very highly in the company, it looks more and more bland. And at the end of the day, everyone doesn't want to get fired more than they want to make something great. What if instead of frames win games, we go with frames don't lose games? <laughs> what if we said frames are associated with positive game performance? The hardest problem on the hardest test. I'm interested. But the thing about those fives and sixes is that even though they're positioned as the hardest problems on a famously hard test, quite often these... Problem six is explain how Dream could have won without cheating. <laughs> Find the math that makes Dream speedrun real. <laughs> when possible, I like to take the time to walk you through how you might have stumbled across the solution yourself. Don't patronize us. To be clear, every single person in this genius chat could solve this without any help. If you choose four random points on a sphere okay. and consider the tetrahedron with these points as its of vertices, course. what is the probability that the center... Chat, to catch you up, a tetrahedron is like a dinosaur that has... It's got three horns. It hangs out with Littlefoot, eh, eats tree stars. It, it, a lot, tetrahedron, like you guys know. It, it's, write that down. History and math. The purport Wait, am I stupid though? Can, <laughs> don't answer that. Can, couldn't, couldn't P1 and P2 be anywhere? <laughs> don't say yep. Don't, don't instantly yep, right? Come on, come on guys. No, I call you guys smart all the time. I said my chat can all solve this. I don't, I'm just asking. It's, it's so much more confusing with four. And here, it's also helpful if we draw some planes that are determined by any pair of these lines. I thought planes had wings. Now what these planes do, I figured it out. Those of you with some multivariable calculus under your belt might think, let's just try a surface integral. That's, and by all means. That's literally what I was thinking. Let's do a surface integral. That was my first thought because I, I obviously remember multivariable calculus. And I was like, oh, wait a minute. My first thought, service integral. <laughs> but then I thought about it again. That's why I didn't say it out loud because I was like, wait, there's obviously a better answer. And I'll tell you what it is, but he's going to tell you as well. Particular Here's how you solve this, okay? Obviously, the Putnam is multiple, multiple choice, all right? Obviously, one of the answers is going to be goofy. It'll be like one-fourth, one-half, 0.667, and like an egg. I'll cross out an egg. Right? Obviously, one's going to be goofy. You cross that out. Whatever answer I end up with after I do all the calculations, probably one-fourth, I'll know that's the wrong answer because I'll know that's like the one they want you to think. So I'll cross that one off. All right, so it's not going to be one-fourth. Then, okay, now we're down to two. I look at the one that's weirder. One of the answers will be close to another answer. That's the right answer because they're going to assume you get close by the end of it, and then they have two that you might end up with, and then one that's goofy. So I cut the goofy one. Cut the goofy one, cut the one that's too far different, 
Get the one that's close to the one that I got right, but was wrong. Cross that off, boom, done. Solve the Putnam, it's that easy. Now there's eight equally likely outcomes. I just wanna say like, we've watched on Get Smarter Saturdays, the full ABC song. We watched the full thing. So maybe maybe we shouldn't jump straight to this. <laughs> that was only a few weeks ago. Did I spell Saturday in the title wrong on Get Smarter Saturday? Kind of kind of undercuts my whole goal here. Kind of embarrassing. And, none of, and nobody noticed till now. We're about three hours in, two hours in, and nobody noticed. One person noticed. No, don't keck W at me. Nobody noticed till now. We're all stupid. We're all stupid, dude. Well, guess what? Get Smarter Saturdays is not about starting smart. It's about ending smart. So guess what? I just fixed it. We're all smarter. All right, let's watch another vid here. Hey, Vsauce, Michael here. It's the numbers we use when counting things like one, two, three, four, five, six, and so on. Damn, he can Sets whoa. like these. Whoa, chat, you said you were gonna get smarter today. I know a lot of you did not know what came after five. And there we have it, it was six. We all got a little bit smarter today. Add that to your repertoire, dude, put that in your resume. You can go to six now. One, two, three, four, five, and then bam. They think you're gonna stop, just hit them with another one. Poof. Next week, we go even one higher than that. You see, if a new guest shows up and wants a room, all the hotel has to do is move the guest in room number one to room number two, and the guest in room two to room three, and three to four, and four to five, and so on. Because the number of rooms is never ending, we cannot run out of rooms. Fucking get him the one at the end then. What a terrible hotel manager. You're gonna move everyone in infinity to a new room instead of just giving him the one at the end of the fucking... No, if I'm in room 6,400,000 I'm not moving because this asshole wanted room one. What Jeff Bezos motherfucker is gonna show up and take the first room? I'm not moving. They can't move me. So the paradox is wrong. Hilbert's Hotel. If it's an infinite number of people, that means I'm included. And I'm not moving. I won't move. <laughs> so it's a stupid, it's a stupid paradox. Tell. Hey, Trek, what if it gives you a better view? All right, then I'd move. <laughs> if they give me the suite. <laughs> Hilbert's Hotel can be applied to a circle. If we... Bad circle. Bad circle. Trash. <laughs> Sorry, buddy. Uh, we're looking for Get Smarter Saturdays, not Get and stupider with this terrible circle. Next video. I could absolutely draw a better circle. I'll do it right now. Come on, girl, shake that as me. Husband's addicted to Fortnite. Wife teaches him important lesson. This sounds like we'll get really smart. I've been calling you. Yeah, I'm in the middle of a game. <laughs> okay. Don't don't end up like this. <laughs> I know this is a skit. I know this is a skit. The problem is this guy looks like he's like 35 and he's playing Fortnite <laughs> so much that he's ignoring his son. If you're gonna ignore your son, you better be playing Super Smash Brothers Melee for the Nintendo GameCube. A million times. Wow, really? This is the thanks I get for taking the trash out? <laughs> you know, you're lucky I took the trash out. Isn't that enough? When you do something halfway, it's as good as not doing it at all. I would be thankful for the things that you did do and not complain about the things you didn't do. <laughs> now, if you don't mind, I'm in the middle of the game. Honey, why is there a dirty diaper in the living room? At least I changed his diaper. Isn't that enough? No, 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 no. You gotta throw it out, too. How do you not understand that? You don't get it? I, look, I can't find my nice dress shirt. Do you have any idea where it is? Honey, this is completely soaked. You didn't move it to the dryer? Oh, I forgot. At least I washed it. Isn't that... Okay, all right. <laughs> this relationship is toxic. <laughs> now wow. she's just taking the piss. That's the thanks I get. <laughs> I took it out of the freezer and put it on a plate for you. Shouldn't you be grateful for that? What? Uh, even if this was unfrozen, this meal is, what is this meal? 
four florets of frozen broccoli on a plate with <laughs> you know doing something halfway is only as good as oh not doing it at oh i wanted you to know what it felt like to have something done yeah. halfway i'm sure this is happily ever after i'm sure this type of stuff yeah what are you doing what i should have done to begin with Imagine he says what I should have done from the beginning with, and he pulls out divorce papers. <laughs> hey, Darman fam. I hope you love that message about how anything you do, you should always do all- That's- that's it? That's real? Wait, that wasn't like a funny parody? That is a real video. I thought it was a parody. That's a real video? Holy cringemas! <laughs> <laughs> I am never making a marketing Monday again. Holy shit, I'm not spending a... F oh my God, I'm wasting my time. 4.6 million? This is a 5 million view video? He got the victory around right here. This is, this is a montage. <laughs> He's watching a YouTube video on Fortnite. That's worse. That's worse. Do you know what the commission is on that? 10 grand. Excuse me. Is this Wait, the new Rolls Royce? They both work here? Why is he explaining to her? <laughs> she knows the commission, bro. That's a $350,000 car, sir. It's really expensive. I don't know if you can afford it. But look, man, I really don't want to be rude today. <laughs> I just don't want to waste my time. Yes, okay. you can see the inside, sir. Don't judge a book by its cover. Powerful stuff. Is that the new Rolls Royce? Yes. Yes, it is. Hello. <laughs> I'm Jake. Paul, nice to meet you. I'll take it. Let's sign the paperwork. <laughs> <laughs> My man. Good acting. Quick, I like that. Okay, Good acting. I've learned to oh, never really? judge a book. I hadn't, I hadn't heard that about you. Wow. It's saying that your credit wasn't approved. But no worries. We'll do cash. 350000 $350,000? <laughs> I don't even make that much in 10 years. From State Farm. I'll be fooled by the suit. <laughs> I'm actually broke. No, he is giving. Can you know, this is like, this is still a bad message. The message is that this guy's broke, so he's less valuable. I'll buy it. <laughs> Please, but there's no way that this guy is getting approved for a loan. I mean, look at the way he's dressed. Loan? Who said anything about a loan? Oh I'm shit! Cash. Oh okay. shit! I am genuinely confused. Where did you get all that money? I'm a multi-millionaire. This has absolutely nothing to do with race, but if a guy shows up with a duffel bag with $350,000 in a parking garage to buy a car, I'm going to assume something illegal is going on. Something illegal. That is not how most car deals are done. Don't judge a book by its cover. <laughs> Did she she yeah. had one line this whole show. I can't believe this guy Darman is just fucking paying out of work actors pennies to film terrible scripts and making millions of views. That is, that, do you realize that like 15 million views, that is like an episode of like fucking Cheers in its prime. Top executives at NBC or ABC or whatever would spend millions on the highest paid actors on an entire crew and a set and a script and to make shows that didn't get this many views. Check his Facebook, it's huge. Million, 101 million views? A hundred and one million views? We've been talking about Dream being a big deal. Wait, why the f*** have we been obsessing over Dream? Dog, it's Darman's era. We're just living in it. A hundred million views in ten hours? One third of America has watched Darman's video <laughs> in the f eight hours since it's been live? Does Dave not want to see it? Wait, is that the same actress? It's the same actress? Judge a book by its cover? <laughs> what if she says it again? If she said, uh, That's why you shouldn't judge a book by its cover. <laughs> hey, Darman fam. I hope you love that yes, message part, about how part. no amount of money is worth keeping a parent away from their child. I appreciate you watching. And remember, we're not just telling stories. We're changing lives. And when you share my videos, you're helping to change lives too. Because of the support, the Darman. That is so true. 
Boys, we're not just on Marketing Mondays. We're not just telling stories, okay? We're not just talking marketing. We're changing lives. And when you subscribe to my YouTube channel and you share my videos, you're changing lives too. You can tell your family and your friends that you're making a difference. You're making the world a more positive place. Check it, check it. Hey,